stopping lag in Minecraft 1.19.3. That's our goal in this video, and the best way to do that is with the Sodium mod. Now, we have an in-depth guide on how to get Sodium in 1.19.3, as well as this in-depth article. It is linked in the description down below. You can watch the video up here. Go through the article at your own pace. It is 100% up to you. You'll also need fabric. That's outlined in our Sodium tutorial, but we do have fabric linked directly as well, as we have a super in-depth guide on getting fabric in the description that goes over everything again in video format and in text format. So the choice is really up to you as to which one of these tutorials you want to use, but you will need fabric and you will need sodium in order to use this tutorial. Once you do, you'll have a fabric loader installation. If we go to the installations tab in the Minecraft launcher here, you will be able to edit this fabric loader installation. And that's the first thing we want to do. By the way, if this doesn't show up, just make sure modded is checked. Hover over Fabric Loader, click on the three dots on the right hand side, and click on Edit. Now in the Fabric Loader here, what we want to do is actually two things. Make sure our resolution is set correctly. Now the lower your resolution, the less Minecraft's going to lag, but truthfully, I'm going to run 1080p because it's easier for you to see, and you can get decent performance out of 1080p in most cases with most computers. The next thing is clicking the More Options here. That's going to open up our Java arguments where we can add more RAM. To do that, you can see right here at the beginning, XMX2G. 2G means we have two gigabytes of RAM dedicated to Minecraft. I'm gonna go ahead and do four gigabytes. That's actually overkill. Usually most of the time, two gigabytes is perfectly fine for vanilla Minecraft if you're running Sodium. So four gigabytes is overkill, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it because I have 64 gigs of RAM and plenty of room to spare. Just go ahead and click save, and now we can launch up Minecraft using the fabric loader here. Fabric has also got Sodium already installed into it. It's already just added the mods folder. And then once you've done that, you'll be able to launch Fabric like we are with Sodium already installed. So we'll meet you on the main menu to start configuring Sodium for maximum performance. So here we are in Minecraft. Sodium is already installed. And we can see that by going to Options, Video Settings. And this is what video settings look like with Sodium. Now, if you do want to add shaders to Sodium and run shaders and Sodium together, you can actually get well over 100 FPS in most cases. And we do have an in-depth guide on how to do that and how to get Irish shaders. Irish shaders, by the way, is the version of shaders you want. And that's in the description down below. But nevertheless, once you're here, let's go through everything. Assuming you don't want shaders, you want the best performance possible. Because if you have shaders, you're going to introduce a lot more lag. Shaders is extremely resource intensive. Now, with this, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you want to get the most FPS possible. Then once you've done that, you can come back in here and change things. For example, render distance should be set to 2. You're not going to be able to see much in front of you, but if you've got an old, horrible computer, setting your render distance to 2 is probably going to be one of the only ways to play. So go ahead and set it to 2, and then we can come back in here later and up it to, you know, something like, a, you know, 12 or something like that. It's a little more playable. Simulation distance, turn that all the way down. Brightness doesn't matter. GUI scale doesn't really matter. Full screen. Now, Full screen does matter in my opinion. I always try to run Minecraft in windowed mode simply because if you're running Minecraft in full screen, it is going to be using more of your GPU, more of your CPU, more of your computer's resources to render everything at such a high, you know, screen resolution. So if you can play it, you know, at 1080p, if you have like a 4K monitor, if you have a 1080p monitor, you can run it at full screen really without any issues. VSync, we want to turn that off. The reason because I want the maximum amount of frame rate possible. If you turn on VSync or turn on a frame rate limiter, for example, limit frame rates to 60, that can actually increase performance, but it's not going to get you the most FPS possible, which is what I'm going for here. So if you notice that you're getting well over 100 FPS consistently, but still getting some lag, you could actually come in here and limit this to 60 FPS, right like so, and probably get decent results. View bombing, attack indicator, and autosave indicator don't have any change on performance whatsoever. Make sure you always click apply when you're done with a settings page here, and we can move on to quality. For graphics, we want to turn this down to fast. Clouds need to be turned off. Weather needs to be turned to fast. Leaves quality needs to be turned to fast. Particles need to be turned to minimal. Smooth lighting needs to be turned off. Biome blend set to none. Entity distance set all the way down. Entity shadows turned off, and vignette turned off as well. Mint map levels need to be turned down to zero, and with that, that is now configured correctly. By the way, something that might be worth changing in the future is turning on things like, you know, smooth lighting, which doesn't have much, as you can see, it has a low performance impact, but can really make Minecraft look better. That being said though, we want to turn it off. We want the most FPS possible. Performance, this is actually where instead of turning everything off, we kind of want to turn everything on. That is except the chunk update section here right at the top. We want to turn this to zero. Always defer chunk updates needs to be turned on. Use a block face culling, fog exclusion, 
entity culling, particle culling, and animated only visible textures. All of these need to be turned on. As you can see, they either have a high or medium performance impact. Isn't that cool how they outline that in Fabric? I kind of like it. That's stuff the same. Then for advanced here, the chunk memory allocator. In most cases, if you have a modern-ish computer, you want to set this to async. If you do have any issues or anything like that, you can set this to swap it. Async's most likely going to be what you want. Persistent mapping, it needs to be turned on. The CPU render here, I would recommend kind of putting it somewhere in the middle. Three, four, just kind of up to you, right, on that one. And then allow direct memory access, make sure that is turned on as well. And with that, Fabric is configured. It's actually really simple, and it's even more simple than Optifine is to configure, which is kind of impressive because Optifine's not difficult by any stretch of the imagination to configure. Now, obviously, the render distance is low, and believe it or not, when I started playing Minecraft in 2010, this is what I had to play with because my computer was so bad. I actually did Let's Plays with a similar look because it was so bad. I could just barely record and, uh, and, and get, you know, Minecraft running. But if we hit F3 here, we can see. <laughs> That's insane. The top left, 700, 800, 900. It's possible here that we break over 1,000 FPS. There it is, 1,072 FPS. Absolutely amazing what you can do with fabric. Now, as you run around and load chunks and things like that, it will drop, but you can tell. If you're getting over 60 FPS, you are going to be able to play Minecraft. So we can easily come in here and one, set the time to daytime because uh, it just looks better. And two, we can do things like up our render distance significantly. I'm gonna go all the way up to 16. Apply that change. We can then come in here and change our quality. I want fancy graphics. I want fancy leaves quality. I want more particles, even though I actually don't like particles. So we'll just do, we'll, we'll keep those at decreased. Turn on smooth lighting, turn on biome blend. Entity shadows can be turned on. The vignette, I actually just don't like that. And then now we can apply this. And suddenly Minecraft looks really good and we're still getting well over that 60 FPS threshold. And as things stabilize out, my guess is, yeah, well over 300 FPS consistently. 400 FPS is even possible. Absolutely incredible what you can do. And again, this isn't bad looking, right? If we stop moving, we're over 600 FPS. Sure, we sacrificed about 400 FPS there. That is significant, but look how much better things look. We can actually see those mountains over there. We had no clue those existed before. So there you have it. That is how you can use Sodium to optimize Minecraft 1.19.3 and get well over 1,000 FPS. Yes, 1,000 FPS is possible. Now, if you have a bad quality computer, a low quality computer, an older computer, it's probably not. My computer is relatively new, even though my graphics card is at this point five or six years old. My CPU is brand new last year and all that stuff. So it, it's not a big you know, deal if you don't get a thousand FPS. All you've got to focus on is getting over 60 FPS for super smooth quality and over 30 FPS for very playable quality. So like I said, I used to play Minecraft recording at 20 FPS and recording at the same time, and I was able to do it. So that kind of gives you a bar there. If you're getting 20 FPS, it's playable. Poorly playable, but playable. And anything over 30 FPS is absolutely great. 60 FPS is ideal. So there you have it. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. That's how you can optimize Minecraft 1.19.3 using sodium. Be sure to check out the video on your screen. YouTube thinks you'll like it, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.